Well, good morning, my Pleasant Hill family and all of those who decided to join in with us on Facebook this morning. God bless you. God keep you. I hope you have enjoyed your weekend. I hope you had a good night rest. I hope you've already had your breakfast and now you're ready to get fed the word of the Lord. So go ahead and tell your children just to sit back and relax. Go ahead and tell the dog, the cat, to get in their little bin or their little um, sleeping container and relax, amen, until we're ready, amen, to hit you with the word of God. But I pray that you are energized. I pray that you've already got yourself ready. I pray that you've had your praise and worship. I pray that you've already set the atmosphere in your living room, in your kitchen, or wherever you may be, that you are ready to receive the word of the Lord. Because we have a word for you on this morning. I tell you from Tuesday night Bible study teaching, where we're talking about tithing, I'm dealing with the Lord with our talents. God has just stuck me there for a moment, and I want to reiterate some of the things that we addressed on Tuesday night because I believe that that was a powerful word for somebody to be able to use those talents for the Lord, but not just your talents, but your time and your treasures as well. So that was a wonderful series of teaching, and I just pray that you are being mindful of the teaching and that you are putting those teaching tools to use to help you to move along in this world. So God bless you on this morning. God bless you on this morning. Are you ready for a word from the Lord? Have you went ahead and set your heart and mind and got yourself already girded up to hear what the Lord has to say? So let us have a word of prayer that we're going to jump into the word of the Lord. And I pray I won't keep you too long this morning, but I guarantee you, if you just share with me, amen, in your prayers and in your shouts and in your amens, I promise you this word will bless your soul. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for just waking us up this morning in our right mind and with the activities of our limb. God, we thank you for what you do. Because you do great things. God, we thank you for who you are. Because you are our God. And there are no gods like you. So Heavenly Father, we ask now, God, that you just come in this place. Saturate this place. Touch every household, God. Touch even across the airways, God. God, just touch in a way like you never have before. Bless us in a special way for the time that we spend with one another. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, God, for what you will say and for what you will do on this morning. So God, take me down into your storehouse. Give me perfect recall of your scriptures. Give me illustration and give me direction that I may be able to impart your word unto your people. So God bless on today, Lord God. God, we thank you and we praise you. It is in your darling son Jesus' name that we do pray. And the people all around the globe said, Amen. Well, God bless you this morning. Amen. Grab your word in your hand. Amen. Grab your electronic devices or whatever you may be used to find the word of God. And go with me to the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew. Initially, this may sound very familiar for those of you who joined in with us on Tuesday night, but we're going to turn it in and give it to you a different way this morning because I just believe there's something in that text that was pulling on me and that we need to really pull on that text to get what God is trying to have us to hear on, to, on this morning. So in the Gospel according to Matthew, we're in that 25th chapter, in the 25th chapter, and we'll only be reading the 19th to the 21st verses. If you're there, signify by saying amen, or give me some thumbs up, and we're going to be ready to roll. Amen? Well, God bless you. In the 25th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, at that 19th verse, you'll find these words written. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh, and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, Thou delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. I want to take that scripture because most times when we read it and we talk about it, we often say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Guess what? I will make you ruler over many. And we leave it at that. This morning, I want to grab the second part of that verse. And I want to talk to you from that topic alone where it says, Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. This morning, I want to talk to you from the topic, You can't have my joy. Glory to God. You can't have my joy. From Bible study even until now, we understand what God is doing with us because we know that he is joy. I want to know, can you get into the place of God 
where no one can interrupt, no one can interfere, no one can mess with the joy that you feel. Now, there's a difference between happiness and joy, and I'll talk about that as we get as we go a little farther. But but the place of great pleasure, the place of happiness, is a place of joy. The Bible talks about the joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy that cometh in the morning. When, when you have gone through a season of weeping, then we look for the morning because joy comes in the morning. I want to help us today because I want us to understand that. Watch this, watch this. Joy, unspeakable joy, full of glory, comes from the Jesus. Glory to God. And then there's a few other scriptures that we talk about because the Bible says, count it all joy. When you fall into divers, temptation. So no matter what goes on in your life, you can equate those things to joy because joy will get you through it. There's another scripture that says, turn, so turn sorrows into joy. Hallelujah. And there's another scripture that says that your joy might be full. Praise the Lord. And then one that says, for the joy that is set before them, Jesus Christ came to do this for us. Bless the Lord. I won't give you all those scriptures, amen, but you can go back and look at those at your leisure and just find out what God is saying about joy. On this morning, when we look at our scriptures and when we look at what God is saying, there is a path that will lead you to joy. There is a path that will lead you to joy. I just want to let you know up front, God is a promise keeper. And when he promises to give us joy, you can be assured that God will keep that promise. Now, sometimes that promise is predicated upon the fact on him doing his part and you doing your part. I'll explain that later. But because God is a promise keeper, any promise that he's ever made to you He's willing to keep his promise. Now, now watch this, watch this. He's not just committed to saying it. He's committed, he's committed to keeping it. And not just committed to keeping it, he's committed to doing it or to demonstrate that which he has said he would do for you. Glory to God. I want us to understand this morning, God don't just talk about it. He is ready to be about it. A lot of us, we do a whole lot of talking, but after the talking is done, what are you doing? Ah, that's why I often tell us, don't just be hearers of the word, but be ye doers of God's holy and written word. It's good to hear it, but it's even better when you can do what God has asked you to do. God demonstrates for us that he will keep his promises time and time again by showing us, even though it may not happen today, if we live long enough, those promises he said to us will come to fruition. God has never made a promise that he is not willing nor able to keep. Even promises that he made to Moses and to Abraham and to Isaac, those promises are still coming to pass even on today. Glory to God. I want to help us to understand that God, when he speaks a promise to us, you know he'll keep that promise. Uh, even when life situations come to you, you have to understand it may just be a season of you going through but God's promise will still come to pass. So don't get confused because it don't look like you're going to get there. Don't get confused because it don't look like it's happening for you right now. Just hold on to God's promise. Keep your joy. Go through the trials and the tribulations and you'll get the promise that God has promised you. How, Pastor, how you know this? I know he'll do it because all the things he promised to the children of Israel, watch this. While they were trying to get to God's promises, when any type of life situation or when any circumstance, circumstance came to them, watch what God did. He, he did this. He caused Jericho walls to fall down. He, he caused a rock to give up some water. He rained down manna from heaven. He split the sea so that the people could walk through on dry ground. He raised the dead. God will do all the things necessary for his promises to come to pass. So life circumstances can't get in your way. If God has promised you something, he shall deliver his promise. Glory to God. I, I want to remind us that that's why I sleep so well. Even though in this society of problems and injustices, even during this situation we're dealing with the pandemic, I go home and I sleep because God has promised me I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So glory to God. So when your mind is stayed on him and not on all the problems of the world, God said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. So I go ahead and go to sleep. 
get me some rest and get up in the morning to go about my day because there's some things in life that I can't change. So I give them to the Lord and I allow him and his providence to deal with those changes. Praise the Lord. Watch this, watch this. Even though God is a promise keeper, sometimes his promises have uh, conditions or provisions or prerequisites. Hallelujah. I, I say that meaning that God is committed to doing his part, but you got to be committed to doing your part. There's, there's a provision, there's a prerequisite. The Bible speaks of those things in a sense that we call if-then promises. Glory to God. I can give you one in um, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 would be a perfect example. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then that's what I mean of if then. If you will do these things, the Bible says, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. So the Bible says when you have an if then promise, you got to do your part and God is guaranteed to do his part. I like it because watch this, watch this, it's like a wrestling match. Anybody ever watch WWE or WWF? When you on a tag team and you can be in the ring fighting as hard as you can, watch God. God is on the on the outside of the ring. He got his hand reaching out and said, tag me in, tag me in, tag me in. God is ready to step in and do his part. You just do your part. God is ready to bail you out of any situation you're in because that's his responsibility. Glory to God. I hear one of my preachers always say, hey, put me in, coach. Put me in. That's what God is saying. God said, put me in. I can do what they ain't doing. They trying to handle it, but guess what? If you'll just put me in, I got this thing. So put me in, coach. Or if you're on a tag team, please tag me in. I'm ready to handle your situation. I'm ready to go ahead and get this thing pinned to the match and get them a count three. Glory to God. Just want you to understand but you have to be careful now. Watch this. How do I get to joy? Mm. There, there's a path that leads to joy. And, the, and my concern is you've got to know how to get there. A lot of times we want joy. We want this happiness. We want this fulfillment. But we don't know how to get there. Life has just thrown us so many curveballs and hit us in so many different ways that life has almost taken the life out of us. But there's a path that leads to joy. And then, well, maybe I ought to back up and digress just a little bit and tell you what, what joy is. Um, over in Luke, the second chapter, all oh, the 10th and the 11th verses. Watch this, watch this. In Luke, the second chapter, the 10th and 11th verse, it reads thusly. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ our King. What? So if you didn't catch that, they went and gave the news, hallelujah, that great joy is coming. What was the great joy? The great joy was Jesus Christ. Amen. He's being born in the city of David. They had no idea who was coming. The angels came to the wise men and told them, guess what? I got some news for you that's going to excite you. I got some news because I'm going to bring you some joy. I'm going to bring some joy in your life. And the joy I bring to you is not just the news, but it's Jesus Christ. And guess what? Jesus Christ is good news. That's why I tell folks who want to go out evangelizing, you don't have to be an evangelist. All you got to do is know the word of the Lord and go out and tell somebody about the life-changing effects that God has already had on you. If God has changed your life because of Jesus Christ, share that with somebody and that's good news. Hallelujah. They had no idea the wise men just sitting out and all of a sudden an angel appeared. So they need some joy. Let me, let me, let me tell them a story about how they're going to get joy. And then let me tell them I'm going to bring it to them through Jesus. So Jesus is our joy. Oh my God. Y'all missed that, didn't you? A lot of times, we can live a life of joy if we live the life that God has instructed us to live, or if we live our life God's way. Not our way, but God's way. I'm going to get to our scripture. Watch this. 
God sets it up for us to say, if you want joy, do it like this. If you want joy, follow my lead, follow my word, follow my directions. And a lot of times we're trying to follow his directions. We have good intentions, but we have bad directions. Ah, you're trying to get to your destination and your destination is joy. You have good intentions, but good intentions won't get you there if you have bad directions. Let me, there's a man by the name of um, Andy Stanley. Andy Stanley. And he says it like this. It's called the principle of the path. The principle of the path. He says direction, not intention, will determine your destination. I'm going to say that again. Direction, not intention, will it determine your destination. In other words, what he's trying to say to us is, you can have good intentions, but if you have the wrong di direction, you're not going to reach your destination. I don't care how good your intentions are, you got to have the right directions to be able to get there. If I can just bring it home today, I don't care how good you are and how meaningful you are to say, well, I want to go to Atlanta. And I have good intentions because we're going up there to evangelize and we want to bless some folks and we want to do ministry. And guess what? We need to get there by getting on 95 South. Stop. If you had all been in Georgia and your good intentions are to go to Atlanta, but your directions are to take 95 South, I don't care how good your intentions are, 95 South from Albany, Georgia will never get you to your destiny. That's all I'm trying to You got to have good intentions and good directions. God has given us 66 books of good direction. And when you take those directions and apply them to your life, you can get to your destiny. If joy is your destination, those 66 books will get you there. Ha, ah, glory to God. So I don't care. Sometimes people have good intentions. And, and, and some, for some reason, they have bad directions. And, and people like me used to tell them, oh, bless your heart. Oh, bless, bless your heart, child. I, I know you tried well. In other words, what we're trying to say is, even though you had good intentions, you've had some bad directions. And the directions you had caused you to be off track or caused you to miss your destination. So bless your heart, child. Your intentions were good, but your directions was bad. So to get back on track, you got to have good intentions and good directions. Glory to God. Uh, some folks just want to be happy. The, the hard part is, it's all right being happy, but joy is a better place than just being happy. Joy puts you in a condition where happiness can't. Uh, I'm talking to somebody this morning. Joy will help you to stay in the right relationship with God regardless of what's going on around you. But if you just want to be happy, watch this, I'm going to hurt you for a second. Happiness depends on if the stuff around you is happy. Huh? Too much stuff got to happen right and has to stay right for you to stay happy. Or oh, somebody missed that. I don't want my happiness to be dependent upon my happenings. If my happiness is dependent upon my happenings, I got to make sure my happenings stay happy. And sometimes I don't have control of my happenings. So if I'm dealing with joy, joy is an emotional condition that keeps me happy even when my situations are not happy. Oh God, don't you feel good? I mean, you don't have to feel good to have joy. But if you got joy, it'll make you feel better. Or some, somebody missed that this morning. Even when I'm feeling bad, if I got joy, it'll change my condition. Even when bad feelings come upon me, bad feelings don't have me. When I have joy, I have control of my feelings and my circumstances because I know who I am in Christ Jesus. This joy I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. So even though my circumstances change, I can still have joy because my joy is in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, I'm preaching this morning whether you know it or not. I, I want to make sure you understand happiness is a condition that helps you with a feeling. Joy is a state of being. Ah, I don't have to feel good to have joy. I don't have to have all the right circumstances going on in my life 
to have joy. But most of us got to have everything going right to be happy. So there's a difference in being happy and having joy. Glory to God. Jesus teaches this parable to us to get us to understand from a natural perspective some spiritual um, insight. Ah, yes, God. He says this to us not to really impress us, but his job, his responsibility is to impact us. And a lot of times we try to get deep, but, but deep people drown. So Jesus uses parables so he can speak to them from a natural perspective to show them a spiritual enlightenment. He takes these natural things to show them spiritual things. Glory to God. I, I don't want to confuse nobody, but I thank God that we're in a church that really teaches. Because a lot of folk, mm, mm, a lot of folk think, watch this, watch this, that they are getting confused because they have spiritual knowledge and spiritual growth. And there's a big difference. Spiritual knowledge deals with the fact that you know a whole lot of scriptures, but you ain't doing none of them. Spiritual growth deals with the fact that you are applying those spiritual scriptures to your life and you are living according to them. Quoting scriptures is knowledge. Using the scriptures, using what you learn is growth. You can know this Bible from cover to cover, but if you don't do it and if you don't apply it, that knowledge does you no good. Once you apply the scriptures to your life, then that's the part. Amen. I hope glory to God. Using the scriptures is what's going to make you uh, grow. Glory to God. I, I want to help you because our scripture says in these texts, and I taught about it in Bible study, so I'll paraphrase this morning. There was a master, and he gave his servants talents. In this case, finances or money. He gave one servant five talents. He gave another servant two talents, and he gave one servant one talent. I'm going somewhere. Then he says, he goeth away. He don't tell the servants how long he's going to be gone. That brings me to another point. Watch this. No man knoweth the day nor the hour that the Son of Man cometh. But be ye ready. Glory to God. You understand? Because one, he gives his servants talents. He go away. He don't tell them when he's coming back. But guess what? He's coming back. Jesus goes away. He don't say when he's coming back, but guess what? He's coming again. And when he comes, he wants to have an account of what you've done with the stuff he gave you. Ah, what have you done with those talents that I gave you? What use have you put them to? Ah, that I gave you. I've been gone for a season, and now I'm back, and now I want to call you into account of the stuff that I deposited into you. Glory to God. We understand from the scriptures that the one who he gave five, he said, watch this, watch this. I'm a hustler, baby. I took them five talents you gave me. I done hooked them up. I made five more talents. Whatever you give me is like minus. I know how to turn into gold. I know how to make stuff happen. You gave me five talents. Don't give me something that you didn't want me to do no with. I'm not a mediocre kind of guy. I'm not an average kind of guy. When you give me something, I'm going to do something. I got the anointing upon me. I'm going to make something happen with it no matter what you give me. I thank God for the kind of folks who know how to make stuff happen. The one he gave five talents. So I'm going to make it happen. The morning when you wake up, are you the type of person who said, no matter what God gives me, I can make it happen? Or are you the type of person who wake up and say, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to see how the day goes and see if I can figure it out. Don't call me if you want stuff to say the same. Don't call me if you want stuff to just be average. If you call me, expect it to grow. If you call me, expect it to happen. If you call me, expect things to get done. Don't call me if you don't want them. Don't call me if you want things to stay the same. Only call me if you're going somewhere. Only call me if you're doing something because I'm here to make things happen. And glory to God. And then the Bible says, till another one he gives two talents. And the same thing happened. He goes out and makes another two talents. They double or bring back 100% earnings or return on the investment from the talents that's been given them. And then he says unto those two, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. 
That's when I say when I open it up, most folks stop at that point. But that's not all he tells them. Watch the ending of that sentence. Watch the ending of that scripture. He goes further to tell them something else I'm going to give you. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He also gives them the privilege of entering into his joy. And the hard part is, sometimes we don't have the privilege of entering into the joy, but I thank God for Jesus Christ who opened the door that we can have joy and joy unspeakable joy. Glory to God. But watch what happens to the one who he gave one. The one who he gave one talent kind of says this. Well, I know you are a hard man and I don't mess with nobody's money. I don't play with nobody's money. That's why I took your money and I dug a hole and I stuck it in the ground so that when you come back, I can make sure I gave you your money back. That's pretty poor. That wasn't even considerate of the investment that somebody gave you. The concern with this whole scenario is he could have chose anybody to give those talents to. But he chose you. He could have picked out anybody because every talent belonged to him and he chose three to deposit his talents into. And because he chose you, should have made you worthy enough to stand up and do something with what he gave you. But this lazy, slowful servant says unto him, I just buried it. I, I, I dug a hole and I, I stuck it in the ground. Watch this, watch this. When God gives you something, all that creativity that you gave me, I just put it in the dirt. All that ingenuity that you gave me, I just, I just put it in the dirt. That wonderful, great mind that you gave me, I just, I just put it in the dirt. Besides, watch this, watch this. This one servant, he saw him put five talents in another person's hand. He saw him put two talents in somebody else's hand. And so watch this. He probably felt like you gave him five, you gave him two, and you just gave him one. So my one is really insignificant. So it really don't matter what happened to this one because you didn't give me what you gave the others. That's the problem we get to when we start comparing. Don't get stuck on comparing what you have based on what somebody else has. If he only gave you one talent, do the best you can with the talent he gave you. If he gave somebody else two or five or ten, let them be concerned with the talents they have and you be concerned with what you have and do the best you don't take your talent and put it in the dirt take your talent and put it to use put it to work for God's kingdom glory to God I want you to understand that this is what the God calls us to do you can't just stay there doing nothing with the talent that God has given you he says this is how it works for those who are good stewards for those who are good stewards, you can now enter into the joy of the Lord. Somebody missed that. You want joy. And you say, well, pastor, I'm a good person. My question to you is, are you a good steward? He says, the good stewards are the ones that enter into the joy of the Lord. So now if I look at your stewardship, maybe now I see why you're so unhappy. Because good stewards seem to be enjoying life. And those who are not good stewards seem to be a little sad. I've never seen folk who are terrible stewards having great joy. You got to be a good manager of things to have good joy. Huh? Even, okay, I hear you. I hear you. Well, Pastor, I don't have nothing. Manage well what you do have. Learn how to manage the nothing that you do have. Even when, thank you, Holy Ghost. Even when you say it's nothing, to the Lord it's a whole lot. So whatever he gave you, even though you say it's nothing, I can guarantee you somebody else is much worse than you are. Ah. So take your nothing and make nothing out of it. 
Take your nothing and make something out of it. Take your nothing and do something with it. And I guarantee you, if you multiply that nothing, you'll get something. Ah, yes, God, yes, God. I, I'm, I'm trying to help you because if you just sit back on your stuff and don't think, hmm, think you can do anything with it, it's a mindset. And your mind has said to you, I have the inability to manage what God has given me. That's a bad mindset. When you can't manage your time, your talents, your treasures, then shame on you. Because God has given you the ability, but in your mind you said, I, I can't do it. You got to shift your mindset so that you can get to the joy that God has for you. And I guarantee you, when stuff is right in your life, you will have it. You joyful. But when things are not right in your life, you find yourself uh, a miserable creature or a poor camp. And you're trying to deal with situations and you don't know how to get up. You say, well, you know, it's the enemy. Stop blaming things on the enemy. Stop trying to fight. Say, well, uh, I'm fighting this battle against the enemy. Well, see, you don't understand scripture. Because the Bible says the battle against the enemy is already won. We won that battle through Jesus Christ on Calvary. Through the cross, the battle of the enemy has already been won. We are already victorious. So why are you fighting a battle that's already won? Your battle is the enemy that's in you. It's the enemy. It's the thing that's in you that you're battling with. You're not battling with the enemy. Jesus Christ did that for us. It's already paid. It's already won. It's already done. Your problem is in me. What's in me that I can't deal with that's causing me to be insufficient or have the inability to manage the things that God has given me? That's why I don't have joy because I can't manage. You have to learn how to manage things to have the joy God gave you. Oh, I'll dig into that in Bible study. God don't want you to forfeit those things he's given you. Don't forfeit your joy because you don't know how to manage stuff. Don't forfeit your joy because you don't know how to use the talents and the gifts that God has given you. The Bible says the one who did not manage his talent well, who only put it in the ground, the master told him, you're going to be cast into a sea of gnashing with teeth. You're going to be cast into the outer darkness. Problem is, he didn't get joy. He's not going to be out there shouting and jumping and having fun. Because he didn't manage stuff well, because he was not a good steward, because he didn't steward God's talents well, he don't get joy. He gets outer darkness. He gets national teeth. It's the difference between heaven and hell. When you don't manage God's talents well. Glory to God. If you want joy, be a good steward. If you want to get into the joy of the Lord, understand how God wants you to manage your time, your talents, and your treasures. And when you get that down pat, I guarantee you, you'll wake up every morning happy. You wake up every morning, but this is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice. Rejoice is a position of joy. Rejoice is that I'm going to do the same joy I did yesterday. I'm going to bring back the joy the Lord had given me because now I've got my rest, and now I'm ready to have joy. Woo! Today is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm hoping this morning this word is hitting because we got to be prepared to let nobody and nothing steal or take my joy. You can't have my joy. You can't take my joy. Work situations, family situations, uh, problems and situations in life, coronavirus, nothing will take my joy, steal my joy, or can have my joy because my joy comes from the Lord. Glory to God. He is my joy. He is my strength. He is my He is my everything. And I thank God for him on this morning because that joy supersedes everything else in my life. Well, Pastor, you look like you're happy all the time. That's the joy of the Lord. Whether I got money in my pocket or whether I'm broke. Well, Pastor, you look like you're so happy. What's going on with you? Whether I got sickness in my body or whether I'm feeling the greatest I can, it's the joy of the Lord that keeps me happy. It's the joy of the Lord that puts a smile on my face and keeps me running because this race is not going to be over until we get to the end. And I want to have joy all the way to the end. Want to run it and see what the end going to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
And I'm just praying that you're going to run with me. I'm just praying that this joy you have, don't let the world fool you. Don't let situations fool you. Don't let nobody or nothing take your joy. Woo. Go to bed at night with joy. Wake up in the morning with joy. Yes, God. Yes, God. You can't have my joy. I ain't going to lose no sleep. You don't like me, that's too bad. I still got joy. I ain't going to lose no sleep. If, if you ain't going to follow the direction we're going in, that's too bad. I, I'm not going to lose any sleep because I still have joy. Because we have to do what God has called us to do. Woo! Let nothing steal your joy. Sometimes, and I'll close with this, we got to know our purpose. And when you know your purpose, you'll feel like life means something or has meaning. And that will help you to maintain your joy. Sometimes when we don't know our purpose and we don't know what we're supposed to be doing, it's so confusing. And we run back and forth, we run back and forth, and we never seem to complete the things that we, that we want to do. But I just want to say to you this morning, I want to make sure you know that you are already blessed regardless of what state you're in, regardless of what situation you're dealing with. Some of the schools have just opened up and I see folks going out and not adhering to the social guidelines and not adhering to some of the things the CDC has put forth. And I'm just a little concerned that they might lose their joy because if sickness hit or illness hit or other things hit because we didn't do our part. God can still do his part. So I, I want to make, make sure you understand that even with this pandemic, even with living in the situation that we're in, things can turn so quickly. From one day things are going great, and the next day everything is upside down. Don't let your joy be like that because life can be uncertain. Know who your God is and know what your purpose is so that your joy will be consistent. Hallelujah. I'm just trying to tell you because life can be fragile. I see it day in, day in and day out. People who I work with, people who are in our ministry, things are going well for them in one minute and then boom, something happened and all of life is topsy-turvy. And I wonder, you had so much joy yesterday and you got bad news. And now it seems like all the life is sucked out of you and all the joy is gone. Even with bad news, huh? even with bad news, the joy of the Lord is still my strength. Even when situations don't go the way I intend for them to go, the joy of the Lord is still my strength. I was telling some young folks, sometimes we, we major in the minor. And school start back and, you know, well, I'm worried about this and well, I'm worried. And I'm just trying to say to myself, that's, that's really immaterial. Life is much bigger and much, woo, than those little, you, you major in on situations that are simple. And sometimes we don't understand it until a major problem falls in our life. And then we go back and say, oh my God, why was I so worried about that when these are the things I ought to be worried about? Stop majoring on minor situations. Know what it is you should be focusing on and what you should be doing and do those things. And then lastly, um, uh, and I'll say this to the teenagers, because a lot of times you don't understand the importance parents play in your life. You are blessed to have a parent who cares. I'm going to say that one more time. You, you, you are blessed and don't take it for granted to have a parent who cares because all parents don't care. A lot of children would love to be in your seat because your mom cares, because your, your dad cares. And then you run around talking about, oh, all they're doing is fussing. All they're doing is trying to get in my business. That's what parents do. Let them fuss. Let them get in your business. They only do that because they love you and they're looking out for you. I, I, I know, I know. Pastor, you know, see, they, they get on my nerves. Pastor, you, you don't understand. You know, she's just doing the most. The heart part let them do it. Let them get in your business. Unless you got business you don't want to be. And you shouldn't have that. 
But know that parents are there to assist you and to help you and to allow you to share things with them because they've gone through some stuff. And God has shown them how to deal with certain situations and circumstances that they're trying to teach you so that the joy they have when you start going through the stuff, they can put that joy in you. Say, so baby, you're going to go through peer pressure. Baby, you may have to deal with bullying. But don't let it steal your joy. Don't, don't let it take your habit. Don't let it make you start thinking about suicide. Don't let it make you start thinking about quitting school. Don't let it make you change your path. Understand how to deal with those servants and keep your joy and stay focused on the promises that God has given you. Don't miss your purpose because other folk are saying stuff. Ah. People will trade places with you any day. But you got to stay focused. Now, don't let nothing don't let no one take your joy. This joy I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Bless the Lord. Just hope you, you felt that this morning. Hope God has blessed you this morning. Just want to say to you, I, I feel good because I got joy. I feel good because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I feel good because I know that most of you feel just like I do. Praise the Lord. God bless you on this morning. God keep you on this morning. We pray this word has resonated in your heart and that you will take this word and share it with somebody who may be going through, who may be depressed, who may be dealing with life situations and circumstances. Share with them how you can keep that joy. Share with them that Jesus Christ came that we may have joy. But then there may be one of you who don't know the Lord and the forgiveness of your sins or someone who's never said yes unto the Lord. I want you to have his joy. I want you to have the kind of joy that he's given me. And so the Bible in the book of Romans tells us this. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, the joy that I speak about, you can have it. Because it says, for that cause, thou shalt be saved. And when you get saved, it's a good shout time. It's a joyful time. It's a running praise in the Lord time. And that way then you can become on the Lord's side and you begin to share that word with others that you meet, whether they're in the school system, whether they're at your workplaces, or whether they may be your family members. Yes, God, share the good news. Share the gospel. Share Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you this morning. God keep you. Just one announcement that we'll make, amen. I thank God, amen, for our Facebook Live. I thank God for an opportunity or a medium that we can continue to send forth his word. The virtual church is not the place that I would rather be. I would rather be in person worshiping with you. But because of the spikes that we're having with the coronavirus, I want to make sure my first priority is to keep us safe. So we're going to discontinue all services until further notice. And then hopefully within the very near future, we can reopen church and come back in and worship and celebrate the Lord. So keep everyone in prayer. Keep everyone safe. Make sure we're maintaining our social distancing. Make sure as you go and come, you're wearing your mask. You're doing those things that CDC requires and that the uh, medical doctors have said is best for us. Not only just for you, but for all of those who are around. We pray that God will continue to keep you, that God will keep you covered, and that God will keep you blessed. Pray for our school system. Pray for our administrators, our teachers, and all of those who are um, entertaining students in other areas. Pray for those who are going back to work in those environments as well. We pray that God will continue to bless you, that God will keep you, and that God will strengthen you. Then we just want to ask, please, ma'am, please, sir, if you have not downloaded our PHNBC app, we ask that you would do so. It's been about four or five months that we've been talking about downloading the app. So I know by now, amen, everyone has downloaded that app. Everyone has that information because on that app, you can find opportunities to see um, Sunday school lessons. You can find our Bible study sermons as well as our Sunday school sermons. I mean, our Sunday sermons. And then it's an opportunity for you to be able to give and to share into ministry. Uh, push the give button and then be able to sow into ministry. We ask that you give your tithe and your offering and be consistent givers. We've been teaching about our stewardship. And we know that 10% of our entire earnings belong to the Lord. And that which you give above that is an offering. So we want to ask, we want to ask that you will be consistent and that you will be faithful and that you will be a good steward to the Lord for the things that he has entrusted into you. The Bible says, bring ye all the time into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house, says the Lord. Prove me that I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. The Bible also says, don't give grudgingly or of necessity, for the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So we ask that you come with that joy and be cheerful when you give. 
I thank God that he has blessed me to be a blessing and that I give cheerfully. Praise ye the Lord. And so we want to ask that you do that. If you're not a member of Pleasant Hill, we want to ask if you would just sow a seed. If you would sow a seed into ministry, I guarantee you, you're sowing a seed into good ground. And those seeds will come up in the due time that they'll bless you in the time of your need as well. So God bless you this morning. God keep you. It's my prayer. And then we just want to say unto you, we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock right here on Facebook to see what the Lord will have to say unto you regarding his word. God bless you. God keep you. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. And the people of God said, Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you on Tuesday night.